Now for our story. In the warm, cozy living room of Aunt Mary Lane's farm on Willow Road, Aunt Mary sat working on a patchwork quilt she was making for her pretty young niece, Peggy Douglas. The lamplight shone softly on her hair as she bent over her work. She was a picture of complete peacefulness. But her companion, Lefty Larkin, was restless. He'd been reviewing his past life, the years leading up to his coming to Wakefield in search of a little girl, the little girl Peggy, who had grown now to be a lovely young woman. Thinking of the 15 years which had gone by since he'd come to the Lane Farm, the years during which Peggy had been growing up, Lefty asked himself again whether he'd been right not to tell Peggy of their true relationship, that he was her father. Wondered if he'd been right not to tell Aunt Mary that he was the man her sister Joyce had married and later deserted. Now, Lefty throws aside the paper he's been trying unsuccessfully to read. At a sudden gesture, Aunt Mary looks up and says, Lefty, whatever's the matter with you tonight? You look fidgety as a small boy in church. Uh, I don't know. I just can't seem to concentrate on anything. Besides, I'm worried about Peggy. I wonder why she stayed in town. I know she hadn't planned to. It's funny Peggy didn't send a message by Jane. Yeah. Jane seemed sort of puzzled, too. She just said that Peggy told her there was something she had to do. That she'd come home alone later. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. It's only 8.30. She'll probably be along any minute. I hope so. Oh, uh, by the way, there's a letter for you. Is there? Well, aren't you interested? It's on the mantle, behind the clock. Oh, it's probably just some circulars. I never get anything important. <laughs> you might be surprised. I confess I was. Considering how negligent you are about answering her letter. Oh. So I got a letter from Del Shipley. Mm-hmm. I always know Del's handwriting. She has such a strong, forceful way of writing. Well, now that you know it's not an advertisement, aren't you going to read it? It'll keep. I'll look at it later. Well, gosh, Aunt Mary... Don't look at me like that, as if I'd committed a crime or something. Well, Lefty, if doing Bell an injustice can be considered a crime, then you have committed one. Holy smoke, if Dell wants to keep on writing to me when she knows the way I feel, well, all I can say is it's, it's her funeral. I can't do anything about it. But, Lefty, you shouldn't hold it against Dell that she misjudged Peggy over that trouble in Chicago. After all, you know, it's did look from the standpoint of circumstantial evidence as though Peggy had something to do with Conley's death. Dell should have had more sense than to think a girl like Peggy would have anything to do with a thing like that. But, Lefty, Dell didn't know Peggy the way we know her. And all Dell was concerned about was protecting you. She didn't want you to sacrifice yourself. And now you're making her pay for her loyalty to you. Loyalty, my eye. That's just exactly what it is. A very deep, loving loyalty. Well, she's wasting it. So far as I'm concerned, Del Shipley and I are washed up. I wish she'd forget about me. Del Shipley is a fine woman, Lefty. I have a lot of respect for her. Aunt Mary, you don't understand her. She's from another world. <laughs> oh, Lefty, you must think I'm a country cousin. Oh, no, no, it isn't that, but... Now, look, look, Lefty. I know Del, and I admire her. And since nightclubs seem a part of our society, I'm very thankful that we have people like Del Shipley to run them. But, Aunt Mary, I didn't say you were a country cousin. Why, you have more sense in your little finger than any smart Alex City dame I've ever known. <laughs> Come, Lefty. You're just as prejudiced for me as you are against Del. Or maybe you're just trying to throw me off the track so I'll stop talking about Del. Hmm? Ah, it doesn't make any difference to me. I don't care. You can talk all you like, but frankly, I won't change my opinion. Well, I feel very sad about it every time I think of what a waste it is. There's a good woman who loves you very much and who would have made you a good wife. When I think of all these years you've stayed out here with us, 
Never having a home of your own. Well, I can always move on, you know. If you're tired of having me underfoot. Now, Leslie, don't you start that again. You know very well how important you are to this family. How Peggy and I depend on you. It's just that I've always felt you should have a more complete life. Don't you worry about me, Aunt Mary. Believe me, I've got everything I want right here on this farm. Everything in the world I want. Peggy? Hello, Aunt Mary. Hello, Leslie. Oh, my goodness, why do you both look at me like that? Oh, well, we're just relieved to see you home safely, dear. Leslie's been pacing up and down like a caged lion waiting for you. Well, I'm at four. It's just a little after eight. Oh, it's a quarter to nine. A quarter to nine? Leslie, you act as if I've never been out alone before. But you see, dear, we were rather puzzled. We knew you intended coming home with Jane. She didn't seem to know why you changed your mind. Oh, uh, by the way, how did you get home? I came home in a cab. That Comstock boy, Tommy, is home from the army, and he's running a taxi service again. Well, isn't that nice? So Tommy's back. They'll all be home soon. Uh, did you have a good time in town? I had dinner with Nicholas. Did you? Well, why didn't he bring you home, then? He shouldn't have let you come out here all alone. I told him not to. He'd just have had to ride out and then ride back. And we said everything we had to say. Aunt Mary, Lefty, Nicholas and I are going to be married the first of next week. Well, isn't anyone going to say anything? Lefty, I thought you at least would have... Next week? Yes. Well, isn't that sort of sudden, honey? Well, I don't think so. You knew we were planning to. We've been talking about it enough. Peggy, you... You really mean it? Yes, I do, Aunt Mary. I know you're disappointed, but... Well, dear, I hope you'll be happy. I hope so with all my heart. I know how you feel about it, but I just can't help it, Aunt Mary. It's the only thing for me to do. I mean, it's just what I want. But next week, Peggy, dear, that... Oh, that's so soon. How can we make the arrangement? You'll have to have a gown. No. And... No, I don't want to make any fuss about it. Nicholas wants to be married in the church, and of course that's what we'll do. But otherwise, I want it to be very simple. I see. Lucky you haven't said a word about how you feel. Well, Peggy, dear, I... I guess it's a little late to say anything one way or the other. I hope you'll be happy. Well, you needn't sound so glum. You've always said you liked me, Chris. Thought it was a good idea. Oh, well, sure I have. Well, what's but... the matter, then? Well, honey, it's... It's just that I've never disagreed with Aunt Mary before on anything so important. And, and I just hope it isn't a mistake. You know how she feels. Well, I guess you're right. It is too late to discuss it now. Nicholas is going to arrange about the church tomorrow and take care of the other things that are necessary. So, by this time next week, I'll be a happily married woman. We oh, need gods. I don't know what's the matter with everybody. You both act as if this were a funeral instead of a wedding announcement. Perhaps that's because of you, dear. You don't sound like yourself. It sounds to me as though I'm acting in a very normal way. I had dinner with my fiancé. We decided not to postpone our wedding any longer. When I come home and tell you both, all I get is sighs and long faces. You're the ones who aren't acting normal. Hey, are you sure this is what you want to do? Yes, I am. Absolutely sure. Okay, honey. But, Peggy, you don't look happy, dear. Oh, my goodness. I'm just as happy as I can be. Maybe I'm a little tired, but that's the only thing that's wrong with me. All right, dear. If you're happy, then I am. I think I'll go upstairs now. And I just want you both to know I'm happier than I've been in a long time. I'm terribly happy. Oh, Lefty. Lefty. If there were only something these two old friends, Aunt Mary Lane and Lefty Larkin, could do to protect the young girl they both loved so much. Always before, there'd been a way. A way to help Peggy out of any situation in which she'd found herself. This time, they both realized with heavy hearts there was nothing more they could do if she insisted on going ahead. But neither could forget the look 
of absolute desperation in Peggy's face as she'd said, I'm happy. I'm terribly happy. <laughs> <laughs> 